The Ancient Mariner is, you know, it's 55 pages long. It's, it's, it's a remarkable statement, and clearly Wordsworth and Coleridge thought this is, this is a poem. But then the first line is, it is an ancient mariner. And I think that is just worth thinking about that. I mean, because it, it, it gives, where has he come from? Um, it's not, it was an ancient mariner, or there was an ancient mariner, which immediately makes it this kind of legendary figure from the deep past. It, it is, it has this tremendous, sort of stunning immediacy, but also it seems to be answering an, un, an unspoken question. So, th so, so there's, there's that, it's, it's like this, this announcement of, of presence. I think the thing which romantic poetry is, we, is forever trying to get at is the, um, the sources of creativity. And the, the, it, the, the intimacy, the closeness of creativity to some forms of transgression. Um, the transgression be, be, perhaps being an outright crime, or perhaps being a refusal to go along with the norms of society, or with... So it's breaking society's rules breaking, in some way. Or in right. some way, bre break, br breaking rules or running away and so and so the, the 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 romantic poets as ima imaginative transgressors p people who are in in one one way or another exiles in one way or another they they they, they are un at home they cannot be they, they can't be quite at home in society in, in the regular world regular in the daily world. world and i think that the 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 ancient mariner works as an you know, it, it famously hinges upon mo the moment when the mariner shot the albatross inexplicably um, and the consequences of that. This is the crime that can never be escaped and it, can, and, and it can't be escaped in particular because it needs to be rehearsed over and over and over again. And so it's, it's the crime which generates the poem. And that's, that's, that's true not only in the sense that it's the pivotal, ev pivotal event in the poem, but that it's the event that has to be told. He has to keep telling the, the poem over and over and over again. And so an original transgression which produces poetry. But then it also, within the poem, what happens is, is, is this, that, that he, the, he's on the boat, he kills the, um, the albatross, and then he enters this whole new space. And you get the, 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 there's a weird sense in which he's in a kind of world of poems or a purely imaginative world in which the, 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 the killing of the albatross isn't simply a, a terrible, inexplicable crime. It's also a kind of miraculous gift um, because it opens the, the, sense, the sense that, the, that, 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 that the, the mariner enters this space where everything has to begin all over again, where the principles of things are not given, they have to be discovered. When, where um, the world is not built, is not established, but is in, in process right at the very, very beginnings. And so we're in a world which, I mean, it's very characteristic of the romantics, um, romantic poets, in, in that geography or environment is, is always um, psychologized or eroticized. It's always, a, it's always like a sort of translation of the mind, of desire, and this sort of thing. And so what, what we get here is a um, the, you know this kind of weird green ice and and the strange white fog and the um, the weird slimy things on the sea and all these things they all seem to me to be um, ways of trying to picture or imagine the the not just the origins of life but the origins of thought and the origins of imagination and, and, and you, you begin to piece together a survivable world and does the albatross is, is, is it a symbol of do you think of, of I think the when I think world, yeah, I, I, no, I don't think it's a symbol Not of the, I don't think it's a symbol of the, the the regular world. It's a multiple kind of symbol. It can mean all it means all sorts of things and, and none of these things. And, and but I think it also I think in a in a basic way the albatross is I think it's something like a nearly symbol. I think, I think it works because it, it clearly invokes notions of, of, of Christ. There's no question of that. But it's not Christ. So it invokes the, the idea, the possibility of Christ, but it isn't that. It invokes the idea of brotherhood and companionship, but it isn't that. It evokes the idea of creatureliness and togetherness with all creatures, but it isn't quite that. Um, and so it keeps coming, it, it, it keeps coming, it, 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 also, it also comes out of, there's a particular moment when, when Coleridge is talking about um, 
he, he, the ice was here, the ice was there, the ice was all around. He, he talks about that and then he enters the ice and he en sort of physically enters the ice. You might think that's an impossible thing to do, but not in this poem, because no normal notions of possibility don't apply. So he enters ice. We can enter water, but entering ice is a much stranger conception. Much stranger. Um, he enters the ice, and it's like a great big swoon, and a, a swound, he calls it, and a swound is a kind of a faint. And he's, so it's some sort of visionary, hallucinatory experience, which is beyond the normal, and out of this comes the albatross. The albatross comes flying out of this, as it were, and then he gets shot. Um, so in some sense he's carrying all these energies um, and of course the, the, the albatross, the relationship between the, the, the mariner and the albatross in many ways repeats the relationship between the, the mariner and the wedding guest. And so there's this terrible sense in which he's, 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 the, he's the double, the other, the, the, the opposite but also the, identi the identical to him and so forth. Um, so it's, the, it's, it's, the impos it's also to do with you know, original sin. It's a, I mean, C Coleridge is obsessed with original sin and the idea that, some, the, again, the idea that the, 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 the basic predicate, the basic condition upon which life is even allowed is sinfulness. Um, the, Coleridge believed that, you know. Um, and I think all of these romantic poets, not just Coleridge, in some, in some sense go hunting for sin.